Hello YouTube world, Mac Daddy 1911 May 1 here with the Shade Tree Survivals. Friday, uh, June the 9th, 2017. Finally got my damn holster from Edgeworks G Code Holsters. And uh, I'm about to open it up. I'm going to do this on video, it hasn't been touched. Kimo just got home with it. And uh, we're going to open it up. We're going to do a fit test with the handgun, with the uh, Colt Combat Unit, with the TLR2 attached. And um, we'll go from there. But let's go ahead and open it up, make sure everything's here that I ordered. Um, ordered a cowling, a separate cowling that would fit the light to go with the holster, a quick detach piece, I don't know what, uh, something. And these, just the holster. All right, limited lifetime warranty. All G-Code products are back with a limited lifetime factory warranty. If any G-Code holster or accessory fails for any reason, Edgeworks Manufacturing Company will repair or replace that holster free of charge. This warranty is for the limited lifetime of the product, but it's strictly limited to the original purchaser. A copy of, our, of your invoice is required for warranty issues. Blah, blah, blah. We appreciate your business. If you have questions about your order, please visit us at www.range5.com or email us support at tacticalholsters.com. All right, uh, the sock light cowling, OD green, $24.95. The sock RTI holster, um, $98. And it should have been uh, black, I do believe. And the GCA 25 RTI wheel. That's the quick detach wheel. Let us see. Here is the holster with the wheel attached in a bag as well as the OD green cowling. So the wheel is in here. That's part three. Let's take it out. I notice there's no instructions. Man, that thing is, it feels very stout. You can see the uh, thumb release and it's spring loaded to get the gun out of the holster. And while we're here, before I take it apart and put the cowling on it, let's go ahead and take the uh, light off and try it just for craps and giggles. And you will notice the gun is empty. It has been safety checked. The hammer is down. Light comes right off. All right, we've got to loosen this screw apparently. Stop the camera, we'll get a screwdriver and we'll get to see what we can do. All right, got our Williams screwdriver here, and there's a retention screw here at the bottom, and we probably got to turn it out like a turn or two. That's a full turn. It still is not sliding all the way in. There is a piece of cardboard I didn't know about in here. Not a cardboard, it's a sticker, and I done mashed it up a bit, but that was down in there. It has a, uh, a pin at the bottom for the barrel to hook into, and I'll probably have to take a still photograph. You cannot see that. Perfect fit. Doesn't flop around. Cock the hammer, put it on safety. It re the uh, retention strap goes right on it. And it releases, gun comes out. <laughs> yeah, baby. I think this will work. Now, this is the thing. This is the thing. I want y'all to pay attention. A couple years ago, Takes Grabner Outdoors put up a video where he accidentally shot himself in the leg, and everybody and his damn brother was making fun of Tex. I think it took balls that damn big around to do what he did. He might have saved somebody's life. 
What happened is he was using a 1911 in the afternoon. He shot himself in the leg with with a Serpa holster. Okay, Serpa holster. Here's a Serpa holster. Your index finger releases it. Now, as long as you keep that index finger straight, you're safe. That morning, however, he was using a holster similar to this. Thumb release. Okay, what they call a thumb drive. Thumb release holster with a Glock. As we all know, Glock does not have an external safety, right? Okay, but he switched from that to a Serpa holster with a 1911 with a thumb release. He inadvertently was thinking thumb release. He released the safety on the, the, the firearm. He jerked on it, it did not move. He pushed back in, he pushed in with his index finger. Gun came out, his finger curled in because it was the exertion, the speed. He accidentally shot himself. Tex, you did a damn fine job. That was probably the bravest thing I've ever seen anyone do. And when I start handling this and using this, this gun will be empty. He has saved my life just seeing that. That means if you go from one type of gun with one type of operating system to another type of gun with a different type of operating system with two different types of release mechanisms on the gun and on the holster, you need to slow down. Me, I wouldn't even do it. You keep the same type of gun with the same type of operating system. That's the reason I insisted on Kimo getting a handgun with a thumb or safety. Okay? So that she can pick my gun up and be safe with it because she realizes she has to release the thumb safety and that is the primary safety on the firearm. Alright? Now what we're going to do next is take these three screws per side off, attach the cowling, then reattach the light to the gun, the Colt Combat Unit, and then try it out again. But we already see the fit is is perfect. It just it's not wiggling, it is stopped. The uh <laughs> I love it. I love it. Eleven weeks now. Took them ten weeks to build it. They tested it. They shipped it to me. I got it today. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. I love it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So anyway, part two's coming up with the light cowling, the light attached, we'll see how well it works. Okay, while I've got it apart, let's, uh, before I put the cowling on it, this is the uh, pin I was talking about. It's just basically a barrel guide. It's made out of the same type of, the same plastic as the rest of the holster, but you can see the barrel slides right on, it slides right down onto the barrel. So that keeps it centered up in there. That's pretty slick. You just take those screws out and it's a little bitty tiny um, Allen wrench. And this set's so old it's hard to tell you. I think it's a 764th, but I'm not going to swear to it. But anywho, Let's see if we can uh, slip this baby on there. May have to do it from this end. All right, it slips right over it. This is what it'll look like. Now to reinsert the screws, there are six of them as I've already shown you guys three per side it's pretty freaking gnarly if you ask me let's see if we can get the camera to see all this all right let's see if we can get the camera to see it and okay it looks all right tell you what ladies and gentlemen having a, several different sets of uh different types of wrenches are very helpful because i've got some that go to the screwdrivers I've got a set that goes to uh, like a, a big ratchet or impact wrench. Um, then I've got this set, and this is the only set that had one small enough. It has one that actually touched smaller than that. This set my dad gave me. Um, he left to me when he passed away. He left it to me in his will. 
and um, every seems like at least once a month one of his tools or one of the little items that he saved helps me out it's like my dad's still here 10 years 17 this would be the 17th year since he, since he passed away and it just seems like he's still here helping me every day in some way shape or form the lessons he's taught me uh, the tools and the different things he left for me and my brothers but mainly for me uh, I, me and him were the ones that we always worked together on his old tractors and cars and my brothers were not interested in that kind of stuff and I was very interested in it before I go out in the field with this I will Loctite all these in with the mild Loctite so they won't work their way out I think, and I told the guy on the telephone the first time I talked to him that this is the most innovative idea I had seen in holsters ever. Um, being able to use one holster for the gun with the light and with the gun without the light. You saw it with uh, out the light in it, so now let's see how it works with the light attached to the gun to the Colt Combat Unit. They did not have one for the Colt Combat Unit, because it has the real deal mil spec M1913 Picatinny rail. Okay, let's look at that rail. Very beefy, heavy duty. All right, that is the mil spec rail, the same as you'd get on M45A1. They did not have one, so they had to custom build it. Um, let's see if I put my coin back in my pocket. No, I did not. There it is. Yes, the firearm is still unloaded. Live ammunition's over here. I have not picked it up. I will not pick it up. Still a touch loose. Let's tighten it on down. Okay, so we got Streamlight TLR2 uh, IRW. Let's see how it works. It is tight, tight, tight. So is there anything I need to do to loosen it? And see, they don't send any instructions with it. So, you know, I'm sort of have to fight with it a little bit. Let me loosen it. Because there's got to be a little bit of slack in those holes, I would imagine. They want it snug. They don't want it to flop around in there, but at the same time, they don't want it so freaking tight that there's no adjustment left in it. It is some kind of tight. Let's keep loosening. We may have to put the firearm in there and then re, re uh, check it again. This video is going to get long, long, long with me messing around with this thing, but that's sometimes that's what you have to do. not see any other adjustments in it that is way too tight I just cannot see where it's hitting that because it may just need like a rubber bushing or a spacer right in here under the screws to, to Pull it out to get a little bit of the uh, to uh, reduce the drag on it because that is too tight. I'm look over the gun, see if I see any. I'm wondering if that thing is sitting down too low. All right, let me loosen the light back up, make sure it's seated correctly on the uh, rail.
that's the thing uh, the light's so big even though it's a tiny light you only have one slot in which to uh, to put it on there for the lock in I think that's all we're gonna get out of it because it's not going any further backwards I've got it pressed against the rail as tight as I can get it It's definitely dragging on the side. So this is what I'm going to do. I've got some O-rings. And I will uh, get some of those O-rings and put here and see if it's if it'll uh, open it up just enough to uh, make it where it's not so freaking tight. Because I've got it loose, loose, loose. And it is very, very tight. You are never going to get that thing all the way in there without getting it stuck so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna take some little tiny o-rings and put it under here you can probably use it like a little tiny piece of uh tinfoil or something folded up something of that nature and what it's gonna do is open it up because I, I think it's dragging on the sides of the light we'll see well folks i am not having any luck without the light the holster works as advertised. It is a very firm, snug fit. Doesn't rattle, doesn't click, doesn't pop. It looks nice. I could have got that out of a black hole. Serpent. Um, I'll roll in some uh, some still photographs at the end. It's like a 32nd of an inch. Too, too narrow top to bottom. The uh, just gets too narrow it will not fit with the light on the gun this will but uh, I still have to modify and build a plate for the back of this to attach to that like I said I'd have been just as good and well off to go with the Black Hawk holster that would for only the handgun but that ain't what I want um, I'm gonna see what they'll do if they can, uh, if they have another one that's a little longer in this area right here, I've taken some detailed photographs showing the the, the problem, and um, if they can exchange it, you know this one hasn't been damaged, I haven't cut it. If they say there's nothing they can do except give me my money back, what I think I'll do is I will, I'll just cut out the ends of the holes, and um, maybe attach me a little bit of. A, a little piece in here to lengthen it just a touch put the screws back in it and then tape the damn thing it's a hell of a note because I paid a lot of damn money for the total works the total was hundred sixty four dollars and fifty five cents I've been waiting eleven weeks I got it like I said the holster itself is perfect it is absolutely flawless the gun I mean, it is in there. The thumb release mechanism is great because as you're pushing down, you're pulling on the gun, and it's and it's it's actually helping the gun come out really fast. I like that. It's set away from the uh, the thumb safety, so you're not inadvertently hitting the thumb safety. Um. Yeah like that a lot um like I said I, I, I could have got a black hawk sir uh, black hawk serpa uh, for gun for the gun only and I wouldn't have to modify or I wouldn't have to build an adapter plate for this piece here and this piece all you do is stick it in uh, whichever one of the holes you want and uh, Push this little tab right here down and it's locked. It doesn't, it can't move. And then on the back side, you have these two little tabs right here. Let's see if I can get the damn camera to focus on it. You got these two tabs here. You push them in, this little tab comes out and that lets you know it's unlocked and it just pops right off. Put it back on, push that in, and it won't go anywhere. So I like it. 
Um, but we'll have to find out what Black Hawk wants us to, wants to do with it because I mean, SOG, SOC, um, G code, in order to find out what um, what they'll do. I mean, if they if they don't have anything else to do to, that they can do with that, then I'll modify it. Um, but whether it will stay because this part here retain helps retain the, the firearm there's a pin a plastic pin that goes inside the barrel that keeps it here and up at the top here to keep it from coming up and out but without this piece here it just rock back and fall out so this piece has to stay on it cannot fall off if it comes off the gun will fall out of the holster so if i modify it i'm gonna i you know if it doesn't work it's all on me there's nothing else to it uh, but more than likely if i do do if i do do that i'll end up having to tape it up just to ensure it to be sure and um i really don't want to do that to a brand new holster we'll see what i got to say i'll wait a week i'll send the photographs in and then if they tell me to send this cowling back and they'll um stretch it or something it's just like I said, from from the center of the bolt hole to the edge, it's pretty much the edge between those two sections. This get my camera to focus, and it is not going to focus. Oh, you aggravate! There we go. From the edge of the hole to the edge of the top here, the bolt the bolt holes on the actual holster fall about halfway between the six so it's, it's like a 30 seconds of an inch difference you know what can you do so for now i'll just leave it in the holster tonight i'm not messing with it anymore i'll get aggravated with it and start throwing shit <laughs> um but in the morning i want to find a piece and mount a plate to this with the holes cut correctly to fit the serpa or the black hawk drop leg and we will mount it to it but i don't know what we're going to do with calum because i mean i'm no better shape now than i would have been if i'd have just bought the damn black hawk serpent um level two or level three just for the handgun because i could have got just that to fit the handgun and it would have instantly mounted up to that with three screws and i'd have been done with it but the whole purpose of having that damn rail is to be able to mount the fucking light, right? If you can't mount the light, why own a gun with the freaking rail to start with? So, we're not going to monkey with it anymore. We haven't altered anything. We haven't damaged anything. We haven't scratched anything. We just took this off, put this on, and it will. the gun with the light will not fit. It will not go in there. And you can see it's got it cocked just a touch. And what it's just too, it's not long enough from here to here. It's just a touch, a 30 second of a damn inch off. What can you do? So, anywho, <clears throat> there you go. This is Mag Daddy 1911 May 1 with the Shade Tree Survival. So, I'll give you guys an update when I hear back from G Code. And we'll go from there. Thank you very much for watching.